Let's turn today to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 7, and verse 24. Here we see the concluding paragraph in this last section of the Sermon on the Mount, which we've been considering in the last few weeks. Here he speaks about two men, a wise man and a foolish man. And it's very important for us to look at these two men carefully. Matthew 7, 24. Everyone who hears these words of mine and acts upon them may be compared to a wise man who built his house upon the rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and burst against that house, and yet it did not fall, for it had been founded upon that rock. In Sunday school, the children sing a chorus, the wise man built his house upon the rock, and goes on to say, build your house on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's right, provided we understand it right. What does it mean to build your house on the Lord Jesus Christ? Does it mean just to believe that he died for your sins? Listen carefully. Verse 24. Everyone who hears these words of mine and obeys them. It's not belief, it's obedience. But true faith always results in obedience. A faith which does not result in obedience is a counterfeit faith. Salvation is by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. But, James says, in James 2.26, faith without works, that is works of obedience, is dead. That's like a body without the spirit, he says. A body without breath is dead, and so faith without works of obedience is dead. A true doctrine can be like a body with ten fingers, ten toes, and all the parts of the body, but if it doesn't have breath, It's a counterfeit faith. So the real mark of faith is obedience. And therefore Jesus says, to build our house on the rock is not just believing in Jesus, but obeying these words of mine, with particular reference to the Sermon on the Mount. And the rains and the floods will never be able to destroy that man's house. But the one who hears these words of mine and does not do them, He takes it lightly. He believes, he agrees. Everyone who hears these words of mine means what? That means he's a man who reads the Bible. Otherwise, how did he hear these words? He's a man who goes to church, to the meetings of the church. Otherwise, how did he hear these words? The only problem is that he didn't obey. It was not lack of knowledge. It was not lack of emotional excitement. It was not lack of information. It was lack of obedience. He called Jesus Lord, Lord, but he didn't obey. He had the gifts of the Spirit, cast out demons, performed many miracles, but he was still founded on the sand because he didn't obey. What is the sand? We can say the sand is our mind and our emotions. If the truth of God only comes into our mind, we're still on sand. If it's only penetrated as far as our emotions, we're still on sand. When does the truth of God hit rock? When our will is blasted. When the dynamite of God's word blasts our will, then we lay our foundation on the rock and we say, Lord, not my will, but thine. Lord, I want to be angry with my brother, but I'm not going to be angry. I want to do your will. I find my flesh lusting after women, but I'm not going to yield to that. I'm going to do your will and keep my thoughts pure, my eyes pure. My flesh desires vengeance, but I will not take vengeance. My flesh loves money, but I shall love you and hate money. My flesh wants me to tell lies, but I shall speak the truth. My flesh tells me to hate my enemy, but I shall love my enemy. My flesh tells me to judge others, but I will not. My flesh tells me to be anxious, but no, I shall live by faith. I shall obey your word. That's the man who's built his house on the rock. Who hears these words of mine and does them. And the one who doesn't hear. The rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and burst against that house and it fell and great was its fall. Now the thing is, the wise man obviously spent a lot more in building his house. Because he he was not satisfied with the superficial foundation. In the parallel passage in Luke's Gospel chapter 6, we read in verse 47... That the man who 
built on rock was the man, verse 48 of Luke 6, who dug deep. In other words, he went through the sand and laid the foundation on the rock. In other words, the wise man and foolish man did not select two other two parts of the town to build their house in. They were building next door to each other. The only difference was that the wise man went through the sand till he hit rock. He went through the mind, intellectual knowledge, through the emotional, emotions, emotional excitement, till he hit the will and yielded his will. He built his house on the rock. The foolish man was satisfied with an intellectual knowledge of the Bible, with emotional excitement, and never obeyed in his private life. That's the difference between the two. And another thing, the foundation of a house is that part of the house which cannot be seen. It's the underground part. And here Jesus is speaking about obedience in the private life, in the hidden part. That's where we lay the foundation, in your thought life, in your attitude, in your motive. There, if you obey the words of Jesus, you lay your foundation on a rock. There, if you disobey, you lay your foundation on sand, merely for the opinions of men. Those who live for the honor of men are living with a house built on sand. One day it will collapse. Those who are living in secret before God's face, keeping themselves pure, not before men's eyes, but before God's face in their thought life, in their attitudes and motives, are laying their foundation on the rock. So we see it's a matter of the hidden life, and we have to pay a price. The wise man paid a hundred times greater price, perhaps, to build his house, and yet we can say externally, both houses look the same, perhaps the same size, same number of windows, doors, color, everything, and yet the test came much later. Men looked at the two houses and said, this foolish man built his house so cheap, he's the wise man, men said. And we may look fools in the eyes of the world at having to pay such a price to follow Jesus Christ, giving up everything, but one day you'll discover that those who have given up everything and gone through the narrow gate are the really wise people. And those who try to get the best of both worlds are the foolish people. Those who tried to follow the Lord and love money were fools. One day their house will collapse. Sure. Those who seek to follow Jesus and not be free from sin in their private life are fools. They are not building their house on rock. What then are the areas in which we need to be careful to build our house on rock. Let's review the nine right attitudes. First of all, Matthew 5, 3, poverty of spirit, a sense of our own need. Second, mourning for our sin and for the needs of others for the glory of God. Third, gentleness, meekness. Fourth, a hunger and thirst for righteousness. Fifth, mercy towards others. Sixth, purity of heart. Seventh, a desire to make peace with all with whom we have difficulties. Eighth, being willing to be persecuted for the sake of righteousness. Being willing to lose a job if necessary for the sake of righteousness. And ninth, being willing to be persecuted for the sake of Jesus Christ when we proclaim that he is the only way of salvation, he is the only true God and the only mediator between God and men, being willing to be persecuted for that. And then freedom and salvation from the nine wrong attitudes. First of all, beginning at Matthew 5, 21, anger, freedom from anger, total freedom from anger. And then total freedom from lustful looks and lustful thoughts, sexually lustful thoughts. And then, freedom from lying, even in our spirit and in our word. Freedom from a spirit of vengeance. Freedom from selectiveness in love. Freedom from seeking man's honor. Freedom from the love of money. Freedom from anxiety. Freedom from judging others. It's the man who is desperately interested in having these nine right attitudes and freedom from these nine wrong attitudes in his deep down in his thought life and in his attitudes and motives, in his hidden part, who is going to build his house on the rock before God's face. And then his house will stand. Let the floods come in time or in eternity, and his house will stand. The result was, we read in Matthew 7, 28, that when Jesus had finished these words, the multitudes were amazed at his teaching. 
For he was teaching them as one having authority and not as their scribes. Their scribes proclaimed, gave sermons. Jesus spoke with authority and we can ask ourselves, how did Jesus have this authority? Two reasons. One, he was anointed with the Holy Spirit. And second, he was preaching what he was already practicing in his life. Do you know the secret of spiritual authority in our ministry? The anointing of the Holy Spirit, but that alone is not enough. Obedience to God's word, practicing what we proclaim to others. That is the secret of authority. Do not proclaim to others what you are not practicing yourself. Do not seek to proclaim the word without the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And we also can follow in the footsteps of Jesus, for it is his will that we proclaim this message to others, that we obey it ourselves and proclaim it to others, so that we are disciples and make disciples of others, and that our churches are churches not just of converts, but of disciples, so that our nation and other nations can see the glory of God.